we're asked to consider the function f of x comma y over the region D. We're first asked to find the critical point of f of x comma y restricted to the boundary of D, not at a corner, and then number two, we're asked to find the absolute min and the absolute max. We will go through the entire process to determine the absolute extrema of the given function over the region D. The first step is to locate the critical points and the corresponding function values where the critical points occur where the first order partial derivatives are both equal to zero or they do not exist. And then step two, we'll determine the max and min values of f of x comma y on the boundary of the specified region, including the corner points. And then finally number three, the greatest function value is the absolute maximum and the least function value is the absolute minimum. When doing these types of problems, it's important to have a graph of the region, in this case, the region D. So looking at how the region is given, we have y is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to x, which would be the region above the x-axis, which has the equation y equals zero, and below the line y equals x, which is a line through the origin with a slope of one. And we also know x is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to four, which gives us this blue triangular region, the region D. So we're trying to find the absolute extrema of the function f of x comma y only over this region in the xy plane. So let's begin by determining the critical points, which are where the first order partial derivatives are both equal to zero or do not exist. So let's find the first order partial with respect to x and with respect to y. To find the partial of f with respect to x, we differentiate f of x comma y with respect to x, treating y as a constant, which gives us two x minus y plus zero minus four plus zero, or just two x minus y minus four. To find the partial of f with respect to y, we differentiate f of x comma y with respect to y, now treating x as a constant, which gives us zero minus x plus two y minus zero plus four, or just negative x plus two y plus four. Notice both partial derivatives exist over all real numbers, and therefore to find the critical points, we set both partial derivatives equal to zero and solve as a system of equations. Let's do this on the next slide. Let's first add four to both sides of the first equation and subtract four from both sides of the second equation. This gives us the system two x minus y equals four and negative x plus two y equals negative four. Let's use the method of elimination to solve the system Let's multiply the second equation by two, so the x terms are opposites. So the first equation remains the same. Multiplying the second equation by two, we have negative two x plus four y equals negative eight. And now we add the two equations together. Notice how the x terms are opposites. Adding the y terms, we have three y. Adding the constants, we have the equation three y equals negative four. Solving for y, we divide both sides by three, which gives us y equals negative four thirds. Well, y equals negative four thirds is not going to be in the region D, but let's go ahead and find the corresponding x value. To find the x value, which would give us a critical point, let's use the equation negative x plus two y equals negative four. And if we solve this equation for x, we have x equals four plus two y. And now we can substitute negative four thirds for y, which gives us x equals four thirds. So the critical point is the point four thirds comma negative four thirds, but we don't consider this when determining the absolute extrema because the point is not in the region D. So now we move on to step two and determine the max and min values of the function on the boundary of the specified region, including the corners. So the boundaries are y equals zero, x equals four, and y equals x. Let's first consider the boundary of y equals zero to find the function along this boundary, we go back to the original function and replace y with zero, which would be f of x comma zero. Replacing y with zero gives us x squared minus zero plus zero squared minus four x plus four times zero, which simplifies to x squared minus four x. Notice now we have a function of one variable, so we go back and use calc one techniques to determine the critical numbers of this function, which occur where the first derivative is equal to zero or does not exist. So the derivative of x squared minus four x is equal to two x minus four. We set this equal to zero and solve, which gives us x equals two. So the point we must consider would be the point where x is two, and because we're on the boundary of y equals zero, 
we have the point two comma zero, which would be this point along the boundary, which is not a corner point, which is actually what the first part of this question is asking for. But let's go ahead and determine where the maximum mean values will occur along the paths of y equals x and x equals four. To find the function along the path of y equals x, we can either replace x with y or y with x. I'm gonna go ahead and replace y with x and determine the function f of x comma x. So we go back to the original function and replace y with x, which gives us x squared minus x times x or minus x squared plus x squared minus four x plus four x. Simplifying, x squared minus x squared is zero, negative four x plus four x is also zero. We have the function f equals x squared. To find the maximum values along this path, we need to find the derivative, which is equal to two x, set it equal to zero and solve, which gives us x equals zero. And because y equals x, the point is zero comma zero. If we look at our region D, we would have considered the point zero comma zero anyway because it is a corner point. And now let's consider the last path of x equals four. The function along this path would be the function f of four comma y. Notice how we simply replaced x with four. So going back to the original function, if we replace x with four, we have four squared minus four y plus y squared minus four times four plus four y. Simplifying, we have 16 minus 16 and negative four y plus four y. We have the function f equals y squared. The derivative of y squared is two y, set equal to zero in solving, we have y equals zero. And again, because the path is x equals four, we have the point four comma zero. Going back to the region D, again, we would have considered this point anyway because it is a corner point. We still have to consider one more point though, that would be the corner point four comma four. So again, for a quick review, we first found the critical point for the original function, but that was outside the region D. For the next step, we found where the min and max function values will occur along the boundary, and then we also consider any corner points. So now, to find the absolute extrema, we need to find the function values at the four points, which are the points at zero comma zero, four comma zero, four comma four, and two comma zero. Let's set this up on the next slide. I've already set up and found the function values that we need. Notice how the greatest function value is 16. 16 is the absolute max. The least function value is negative four. Negative four is the absolute min. So now going back to the original question, for number one, the critical point of f of x comma y, restricted to the boundary of d, not at a corner, would be the point that we found, the point two comma zero. And therefore we enter a equals two and b equals zero. And we also know the absolute minimum of the function value is negative four, which occurs at two comma zero. And the absolute maximum is positive 16, which occurs at four comma four. So sometimes you will be asked to determine where the absolute max and min are located, which would be the corresponding critical points. I hope you found this helpful.